Well, hello, and welcome along to another We Happy Few 506 podcast, um, which should be subheaded the Nearly Men, but I'm going to subhead it to the Masters of the Air podcast, uh, because that seems to be our bent at the moment. We are very privileged to do so. Um, I'm joined by my beautiful co-host, Doug Allen. How are you doing, Dougie? I'm very well, thank you, Matthew. How are you? I'm pretty good. Well, am I? <laughs> I, uh, I had another injury. Oh. Uh, I took a piece of my finger off. How did you manage that? Was this with tools? Did you yeah, yeah. A hammer? I, all... I lack your skills with tools. Um, well, I was putting some flooring down in this basement. Yeah. Redid all the basement. Um, and then they wanted some flooring now. But it's like gym mat flooring. Okay. You know, that's, it's, it's thick. So yep. the only way to cut it and fit it is with a really sharp Stanley knife. Oh. Um, and I just, you, I have a four-year-old daughter who I would tell, don't cut towards yourself. Always cut away from yourself. Yeah. And I just, e -e -e -e, and then I got angry. I slipped and I literally filleted my finger. Oh. It looks like a fish gill. Um, <laughs> so all I could think of doing at the time was just getting the strongest tape I could and taping the flap back down again. Yeah, so that's, that's a good idea. I, I, I've got, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I'm working for Americans. They're like, oh, my God, do you need stitches? Can we take it to the hospital? We can't pay. Because, uh, of <laughs> course, <it's, laughs> the medicals run for profit out there. I was like, yeah, sure, you can take me. Um, I was like, no, if you've just got a really high-strength pain medication, that would be fantastic. Oh, but yeah, they're famous for that out there. I think you yeah, should yeah, yeah, yeah. Re rethink your tool, your use of tools and the idea of a straight edge or something that, can stand between you and the weapon that you are holding in your other hand. I think that's always a good idea to think about for you. It's a fascinating idea, Doug. Yes, I will yeah. take that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's a fascinating yeah. idea. Right. We need to introduce our guest. Um, it was longingly and lovingly playing with the back of his hair. Uh, like, so, okay. So it's <laughs> Joseph Bubbles pain in the show that you will have seen. Yeah. You will have seen the show. It was fantastic, fantastic performance excellent young actor and i'm struggling with the pronunciation of his name so i wrote it down phonetically <sighs> okay i'm gonna go for i reckon it's louis not lewis or am i wrong it that's correct that is correct yes. uh, it's and it's got to be greta rex yes that's it <laughs> <laughs> fantastic yeah now that's... That, you are yes oh i feel so good about myself um <laughs> you're a native of derby is that a derby name it is. It's a very um, uh, Derbyshire, you know, yeah. up into the, the Peak District sort of region. Um, a lot of people look at it and think it's French Belgian. or I've something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they see but the Around X. that area in Derby, there's lots of things like Ash Ashby de la Zouche. And yeah. 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 Well, um, the name itself just comes, uh, it's a sort of condensation no, that's the total wrong word um what's the word you know when it trickles oh, down over the generations it was oh, it, yeah, it's like it's been distilled it, distilled from from um miners basically who, who used okay. to mine this area called the great rake uh and the great rakes up in the uh peak district yeah. so the great rakes became great rex greater rex over the years oh, right. th that's what it is yeah it's you don't really get it anywhere other than um uh, Derbyshire, but obviously the combination of that with Louis as my first name throws people off because uh, you think, oh, it must be French. So it's a very wow. historical name then from the region. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Wow. Straight off the bat, Louis, I've um, I realised we've had a couple of your guys on. Um, and yes, Josh. I listened bat, to the I've Josh. Noticed, uh, <laughs> I've noticed how much more erudite and smart your your cast members are than ours. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and good looking, yeah. They're good, like, yeah. They're they're better looking, but also they're way more erudite and smart. Um, Ooh, really, that's that's yeah. You all you're all educated, right? So you all went to school and graduated, and <laughs> you all actually turned up at school, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 that's very lovely. I've not said anything yet, um, so, so so you're making assumptions there. But um, yeah, no, I heard. I, I will listen to the Josh one because uh, yeah, J Josh and I are, are good friends. We've been friends for a very long time. So so yeah, very smart, very smart indeed. So, well, where are you now? How are you doing? I'm in Derbyshire now. 
Uh -huh. I uh, I'm doing okay, thank you very much. Um, I I moved out of London uh, a few months ago, just before Christmas. Um, back in Derbyshire, where I sort of missed the um, the countryside, the trees, the rivers. You know, I lived in London for five years, um, so, so I had a bit of, sort of London fatigue. <laughs> Is it? I mean, you don't really need to be in London as a young actor anymore. Do well, you? You well, used to, but you don't. Well, there's a great atmosphere in London, and the, uh, in terms of the events uh, and the networking, mm -hmm. I hate that word, but um, that can happen. London's a good place to be. But to be honest, I first moved down there because all my auditions and meetings were down in London. But now everything's a self tape, so it doesn't really matter where you are. Which is which is great, really, isn't it? Because you're not beholden to a ridiculous rent when you live in a rabbit hutch. Uh, exactly. I do. May, I do wish there were more meetings that happened and auditions rather than just sending off a, a tape into the into the ether. the ether. It feels so weird. It feels like you're talking to yourself, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. In a dark yeah. room. <laughs> yeah, if you ever but... need, I'm just plugging Doug here. If you ever need someone who does really good self tapes. Doug runs a company that does that online. Do you? Great. Yeah, yeah well, I've done, done, I'm done in it for, for a while. But, yeah, I started it a couple of years ago and just kind of doing it as a hobby, really. And, uh, yeah, I've taken a bit of a break from it now. But, yeah, if you do need any help doing a self-tape and you've and all your normal sources are kind of busy or just, as I find, um, avoiding me, <laughs> you know, when they know, they know it's coming, you know, the mates, they kind of know it's coming. Um, yeah, uh, get in touch yeah absolutely uh, thank you i will do i usually um use my mates yeah. um and i had like going around them like sort of yeah giving one a yeah. break for a month or two and then yeah <laughs> yeah I, I had an arrangement with my flatmate when i lived in london that um any self-tape that he helped me with if i got the job i'd give him 0.01 percent of whatever they paid me Okay. Yeah. So I think wow. I did, I did, he did actually help me with the Masters of the Air tape. I think I ended up buying him a Domino's pizza or two. And that was his payment. <laughs> but did you... Okay, so but, we can reverse quite, engineer you're, that. You're, you're, you're no, reverse no, engineer. no, no, no. Figure, you out your, uh, figure out your fee. <laughs> you're quite, you're quite, you're quite you're sort of young in your career. So did you, I mean, how many, did you really experience like in-person auditions for that long? Or has it mainly been self-tapes for you? Because it's been around like COVID was now. When did that start? 2020? It's like four years ago. Yeah. Well, I have I started auditioning for things when I was about 10. Right. Because oh, I, um, I went to the Nottingham Television Workshop, which is a great place for young actors that sends, sends you, as well as teaching you the trade, it sends you off to auditions from a very young age uh, for great great things you know bbc productions itv channel 4 films yeah. um so i i was in the auditioning sort of you know train you experience it yeah yeah from a very young age so i was used to that and then i i sort of witnessed that become self tapes mm -hmm. over the years and by the time i was 18 uh that it was sort of 50 50 meetings and self tapes and then after covid yeah you're right covid was the nail in the coffin for face-to-face mm. -face. i still go to face-to-face -to -face meetings for you know if you get recalled or you do chemistry yeah. reads with people but and what's yeah. your yeah. have you had to spend a lot of money on your setup do you have you had to get sort of nice decent lights and a camera stand and everything or yeah i, I mean amazon you know yeah you have to do it though didn't you you have yeah. to yeah because the quality because you know they, they'll just have the self tapes running in the in the you know, in the casting director's office and half yeah. the time you're probably not paying attention and, and you know that as soon as one's poorly lit or the sound isn't good, they just probably just fast forward and just get rid of it straight away. So, yeah, you're right, that's... which is another yeah. argument for why, you know, self-tapes are a little bit problematic in that way because it's yeah. it's sort of, there's there's more, you spend more time focusing about uh, focusing on the technical aspects Mm. <laughs> to, to sell yourself no. rather right. than just worrying about the performance and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing yeah. about self-tapes that makes me think is I reckon there's a whole generation of young actors that have never put a pair of trousers on because you don't need to. You've only just, <laughs> just <laughs> been in my pyjamas for four years. 
I would love to. I would love to have stood up then and shown you me and my pants. But sadly, I do have trousers on. Yeah. <laughs> but you're in your incredible Hulk pants. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to get on to Masters of the Air, obviously. Um, but I was tinkering around on your IMDb, um, and there's a movie that you're in called Layla, and I, I wanted yeah. to. There's a, I have a whole thing I want to talk about here. So um, uh, tell us about that. And the, did he go to Sundance? Is that right? Yeah, in January. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, tell yeah. us a bit about the movie, and then I wanted to talk about Sundance because I've got a good Sundance tale there. Okay. Uh, well, the movie is Amru Al Qadi's debut feature. Um, it's a, the story of a non binary Palestinian drag queen, Layla, played by um, Bilal Hasna, incredibly, um, as in they are incredible. Um, uh, and Layla meets and has this formative relationship with a sort of straight laced corporate gay man played by myself. Uh, and it's they have this sort of whirlwind romance uh, and they learn a lot about each other and the world in which they both live. And it's about self-identity and self-acceptance. And it's a really beautiful film. And I'm very proud of it. And so far, the responses have been really, really Nice and heartwarming. It must be if it went to Sundance. Um, yeah. Did you get yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, great, wow. isn't it? That's that was a, a whirlwind um, yeah. mental experience because I was there for four days. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, jet lagged. Um, uh, just but going from thing to thing, you know, yep. to talking about the film, watching the film going to an event uh, that you've been invited to as part of the film. Uh, and then before I knew it, it was all over. And then I flew back for the uh, the Masters of the Air premiere, which was um, on the day I landed. So I sort of turned up to that a bit wired and was pushed straight onto the carpet with people snapping photos. And thankfully, I don't think you can tell in the photos that I'm dead inside. A little, little, bit, little bit you can, but apart from yeah. <laughs> Did you, did the film, I'm going somewhere with this, that's why, um, did the film, go, did you get invited to the Outfest party? To the what? Outfest party. Because uh, I does film, ring a bell. weirdly enough, that came out where I was playing like, I was playing like a gay dude, and it was me and Shifty Powers from the show were playing like lovers in the film, and it went to Sundance. Yeah. And Outfest uh, were there. <laughs> Were there and I took my mum, um, because I'm so macho. I took my mum to Sundance, my my late mother to Sundance, and we went to this outfest party that they threw for us because we'd done this film and it'd come to Sundance, and you know, it was like you know. And my mum <laughs> in the party, it was just like this this producer comes up to me, he's like, Oh, I love the film and everything, and he had his husband with it, and his husband looked like a Disney prince. He was the most good-looking fella. And my mum, who'd had a couple of wines, spent the entire time going, you're not gay, you are. You, you can't be. How can you be a gay guy? And he said, yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, you know, so I am, yes. And my mum, who's from Lancashire, could not compute it. Uh, it was, what, it was be, Because what, on, on the grounds that of he him was so good-looking. Such or... a strikingly handsome hunk of meat that he was. Oh, I think okay. she just couldn't compute it. That was, that, was, that, was that the time? Her attraction. Was that just the time just before you started filming Band of Brothers? Or was it the uh, year we after? Shot the movie just before. I mean, yeah, all right. A yeah. week before we ended it, and then we started Band of Brothers. But they actually didn't come out for yeah. about another eighteen months after the show. I actually just got a message from that from that director this morning, Duncan. No, you didn't. Yeah, just saying hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, duck that, mate. Duck yeah. that. Um, <laughs> No, it was because then at that outfest. So anyway, I was like, I was so embarrassed by my mum. I just, I don't know why. My go-to whenever I'm embarrassed, I, I just start talking about rugby, like the, the, the rugby, like for no complete non sequitur. And the big hunking, gorgeous man was like, "Oh, I play." And I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, I play in Los Angeles. I'm part of a team. Like, um, you know, it's uh, we, we like to get together. It's mostly gay, gay men, and we get together. We play in this rugby team, and it's called the RFC Barbarians." And I, I was like. Well, I'll play in that team. I'm in LA next month. I'll play definitely. It was not as loving as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I got the unholy shit kicked out of me for eighty minutes. Yeah, I think uh, the, I think the, the I think the clue is that it is rugby, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean this, this it's is the not early two like, thousands. You know, it's not yeah, as progressive it, a time as it is now. I was like, oh, this is going to be easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, highly. In America, highly, yeah, in, America sort of, in America, they it, play like a, um, they play American football, but with a frisbee. In high school, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. it's like it's the same rules and the same principles. But there's, you know, you're taking all of the, the the tackling and you know all of the heavy stuff out of it, and they do it with a frisbee, apparently. Yeah, My yeah, that would be better. I, yeah, I, I should. There's no that. way around yeah. it in rugby. It's just that, hits. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually my son was playing last night. He started to play for the high school, um, and I, I I sort of turned up and I I, I turned up before and obviously I'm wait yeah screaming and shouting from the sidelines. And there was an Irish fellow there. He's like, oh, you're the English boy. And I was like, yeah, he said, I'm the Irish guy. And then he started yelling and screaming. And I said to my wife, um, is that what I sound like? She's like, yes, yeah, I'm going to shut up then. I sound like a tool. <laughs> um, anyway, let's uh, let's get on to Masters of the Air, enough jibber-jabber. Um, so tell us about, tell us how you learnt about it. From So I want to do the, yeah, notification, the, the notification to casting bit, the bit where you think, wait, 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 wait this is something good. To the point when you get it, because that that period of time is is so magical, isn't it? As an actor, yeah. Uh, well, actually, it sort of came and went away for me um, because it came in 2020, the first tape, and it was to play uh, Austin Butler's role. Why know, didn't Gail. you get that? Um, <laughs> I don't know to this day, <laughs> but I do remember. I was locked down at the time. So I got my mum to do the tape with me because I came in a lot by, I, I was only, uh, how old would I have been? 23, 24. Um, and I thought I'm not locking down in some box flat. So I come back to Derbyshire and lock down with my family, uh, oh, which was lovely. My mum ended up helping me with any self tapes that came in that period. Uh, and then the one for Whirlwind came in, which was the sort of code name. I'm sure you have been told yeah. that. Um, and it was to play Gail. <laughs> and I had to do the toothpick. That It was written he had, that he had a toothpick in his mouth and he was constantly chewing on this toothpick and he was very cool and there was this whole monologue. Um, and I just could not stop choking on the toothpick. <laughs> which, which just shows you some people are born to play <laughs> certain roles. Yeah. And I, I was there with this sort of stick waggling in and out of my mouth and I was trying to do the line and sort of talking I and not really getting my words around it um managed to record some you know fairly competent take sent that off heard nothing mm. for months and then at the start of 2021 in like January my agent called me up and said you remember that whirlwind thing yeah and I thought, no way, toothpick. I'm going to be toothpick guy. What? <laughs> um, and he said, well, they, well they, they'd like you to read for this character called Bubbles instead. Um, so I did that with my flatmate. And that, again, went away for like two months. And then I got a call saying, you've been offered the part. Wow. With, with, with no other, no meeting or anything. Although my agent did say, your tape has had to be signed off on by 19 people wow. to wow. agree that you've um that, that they can offer you the part including tom hanks and steve to be at work yeah. um uh and so so that was it and then they sort of called me up the following week because it was starting it was such a quick turnaround yeah and they said hi louis um so boot camp next week <laughs> so wow. okay so you just had two you submitted two tapes yeah, and then you got a call to boot camp, and everyone had kind of different ones at different times. Was how, how was yeah? Your, was well, I was the first in hotel, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We did all oh, that hotel, man. We spent long, long, long <laughs> days in that hotel. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so so the boot camp, I was part of the first wave of about 150 lads, uh, who basically populate the first half of the series or the first three or four episodes um and that was intense a lot more learning than we uh, anticipated because uh, we'd seen all the band of brothers boot camp stuff and we were expecting to be drilled relentlessly 
by Dale Dye. Um, but there was a lot of sitting down and learning mm. and taking notes, lectures kind of things, which was great. And I enjoyed that very much because, you know, we only had two weeks to learn a lot about what these men did and how they did it and what the roles were and all that kind of stuff that is useful to know um, for your, for your character, but there was still physical stuff as well. Obviously like there were competitions of who can fuse a bomb fastest, which team mm. can fuse a bomb fastest, which my team won. Just had to say that. <laughs> and how it- and and did you and you were all given a, like we were as well, were given a file on the on the person that you played. Was was there much information in that file about the real bubbles? Um I was given some information, not loads. Uh not loads at all. I in fact wasn't even told that he was from Kentucky until I'd already signed on. Mm-hmm. Um because when I was doing the self-tape, you just had to do gen generic american general american whatever that means um and it was only during the boot camp that i went to my first dialect session they were brilliant the dialect coaches helen um helen and brett and and they said so bobbles joe payne is from lexington kentucky and i was like what Uh, that's not an accent i've ever ever attempted before uh and they played me videos and things um uh yeah so uh, that was that was that before before i knew it i was doing bubbles so i mean was it tough being you were just locked down in a hotel the entire time tough being yes. in a hotel. Was well it, was, not was tough. It as tough as being like outside in a tent or in a barracks you know like we were would you would you consider it that tough or i think you got off easy oh yeah, yeah i en- i enjoyed the time there the hotel was in the middle of nowhere on the side of a sort of dual carriageway. Um, nice. uh, but there were actually, I'm a, I'm a runner. So for me, I was very happy because there were fields galore and footpaths all around. It was actually some quite beautiful countryside. Um, so I was very content to sort of go off on little runs, which actually I managed to tempt a few of the lads to come with me a couple of times, which was really lovely. A little sort of bonding thing as young men jogging over the fields, <laughs> the countryside. Um, yeah. But because it was COVID, there was a lot of isolation, even on set, we weren't allowed. You've probably been told this already. We, we weren't allowed to get within certain distance of each other. And we had to basically stay in our own, uh trailers um not for the whole time there were times where you were allowed to sort of mingle and stand but just not touch each other um it was a strange shoot you know it it shut down about three times because of covid cases you know and that would just tear through the cast and crew they've spent a lot of money i was working on a show at the time i was working on das boot and they and they had a line in the budget for COVID testing. It was something like two million or something yeah. crazy that they had to spend on that aspect of shooting. Yeah, and, they, and the insurance. They, we all stayed in one hotel, like all the cast and the crew and all the producers were all in one space and had to go and get tested every evening to get the okay to work the following morning. So oh, like, right, yeah. yeah. We we was were it, tested every day on arrival. Masters, you were tested every day on arrival. Yeah. Oh, it must I, have taken and, forever. Could, just turning up at six a.m. Yeah. and then having some, you know, lovely person, no matter how lovely they yeah, are, this person alone. shoving things to the back of your throat <laughs> oh, when wow. you're still half asleep. Honestly, it does more for you than a shot of coffee. <laughs> sticking these things up your nose and in the back of your throat and you come out of that and you go, right, that's I'm awake now. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's horrible. And that, that went on for six months, I think. Well, the whole shoot, so yeah, eight, eight months. Do you ever get used to that or is it just as horrendous every day? No, not really. It was just not, not a pleasant experience but it was necessary at the time and they it was a constantly evolving thing wasn't it that that's mm, just yeah. the whole of covid yeah. um and i just felt so, yeah just felt so grateful to be working because everyone yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. locked down and you know i, I was mm. i was in malta mm-hmm. 
you know, in, in sort of February, March, you know, when it was sunny and Lovely. 28 yeah. degrees and I'm like, I'm working, it's sunny here. Like I'd been locked down in Berlin in a like minus 15, you know, it's, you, you just feel grateful, didn't you? Yeah. Really? Kind of, yeah. yeah. And it was my first job out of, out of the back of COVID as well. Yeah. I hadn't worked the whole year yeah. previously. Um, so that was, I felt very relieved and excited and it was a big job you know yeah. to to not do anything for a year and then to go on to this i was quite terrified um, um tell us about the group that you oh he's just froze you were in gator of the did group yeah sorry what did you say oh i was telling about the, the group that you're in your your bomb group uh, and the guys involved in it yeah um as you might be able to tell I yes. didn't have as much bubbles. Didn't have as much of the sort of group camaraderie as as uh, a lot of the guys because a lot of my scenes were quite isolated, and it was just me and Anto. Yeah. Um. But you know, we still. I, I think most of my bonds were formed during the boot camp. That's when we all really got to know each other and got to grips. As soon as the filming days came around, personally i didn't i started to see less of everyone because it right. would just be me and anto here or or you know i, I was in a episode two or i was in a sick bed um so i saw less and less of people as the the show went on but there was a definite um tangible bond that was formed that lasted throughout the whole shoot really um the boot camp did a really good job at instilling that into us and as far as playing the character of Bubbles, um, I know you weren't given too much information. And I spoke to Matt May from the Hundredth Bomb Group Foundation about this. There's, there's sort of sort of reasons why maybe they didn't pass on a lot of information or, or families contacts and stuff like that. But from reading what you got from the scripts and from what you were taught, what for you was kind of like the hook uh, to the character? Like, okay, I get him now. Because when you get a script, it's just like. Okay, okay, okay. And then suddenly reading it, reading it, reading it, you get kind of a hook and you think, ah, I, I, he's, his blood's in mine now. I, I understand this guy. Hmm. That's an interesting question, actually. Um, I have to, I'm trying to sort of cast my mind back because this was over three years ago now that I was. I mean, sometimes this. there isn't one. Sometimes you just kind of get it and you can't really articulate what it is. Yeah. Um, I think I remember feeling that his, his sort of two hander scenes with cross mm -hmm. felt really, really personal in a way. Um, and like we were really being given an insight into what a, you know, a best friend relationship can be like under these, you know, in, in this, uh, horrible situation that they were all in so those scenes the playfulness of those scenes were really fun to explore uh so i guess in a sense that is probably the answer to your question because mm -hmm. oh, when, when i got the script i was expecting to expecting it to be all like i was up in the plane and lots of uh technical uh you know bomber acting yeah. um but then when the scripts came through and most of my stuff was sort of conversational character uh moments yeah, vulnerable like, yeah 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 that's it the, yeah. the vulnerability of it um yeah. and then i think it's because of that that the in episode five it it feels quite impactful i think uh yeah. when he i'm allowed to talk about spoilers or <laughs> Yeah, we're not Apple TV. They might tell you off, not us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's out now, I assume. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, out yeah, there. It's out. You should have seen it by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when then Bubbles sadly doesn't make it, I feel like it really hits mm -hmm. because you've had those lovely intimate scenes. It hits when any, you know, when any of them yeah. don't make it, but yeah. there's a particularly uh, yeah, heartbreaking element to, to theirs. Yeah, um, it, mainly, mainly, mainly down to Anthony's performance as well. Obviously, his response to it is just yeah. brilliant and heartbreaking, and so so moving. 
it's yeah. an interesting um, point that you raise about it, it. You know, the relationship being sort of the best friend relationship, and it, I just sort of noted it down as you were talking. I mean, I don't know what I would prefer that they're in under the pressure that they're in knowing there's a bloody good chance you're not going to make it back and you're going to go through flack and you're going to go through all this like terror you want your best friend with you because it's like this is the guy i really love you know i feel safe around him but you don't want your best friend with you because you think i don't want to lose my best friend mm. yeah um, that's that's the the nature of it isn't it and they were never actually they never crossed me in bubble. Never flew together because they were both, right, yeah. you know, their their journeys were parallel because they were both navigators. Um, so it would always be one of them would go up. Um, I, I think no, actually, they did. They did. They uh, at the very start. They're just coming back. They're arriving together, aren't they? Um, but the, in terms of missions, they sort of want to be on the ground while the other one's up, and, and so there's that constant worry the whole time. Yeah, my my dad, my dad's friend uh, was a navigator on a Lancaster in World War Two, and, and he said and he his name was Ron and a lovely old guy he used to they used to play tennis once a week in Epping Tennis Club which is at the end of the central line and he would he would come wearing his demob coat that he got demobbed with in 1945 or 44 and play with an old wooden racket and uh, he, he he said he had the the navigator was the best job because he said you had to constantly think and work out and think and work out and think and work out. And it took your mind off the like incoming and, and flat and what, or, or the, or just the general fear and anticipation of knowing that, okay, seven minutes from now, we're just going to get, you, you, you know what I mean? Which, it, which he would sort of see like the bombardiers and the, and the gunners and stuff like that. They'd have a little bit more time on their hands to kind of think really about what could happen to them, why he just had to focus, focus, focus. It was a really, really tough job. Did you discover the elements of, you know, navigating in the boot camp? Was that, was it quite challenging? We we had, Anthony and I had a, a sort of private lesson. Mm. Uh, we were whisked off um, and we were actually sat down in the, in the model of the plane mm. um, with the maps and we were told what they had to do with rulers and protractors and their, their notes and their timesheets. And we were sort of tested as well, which we weren't, <laughs> which we weren't expecting as actors. You, you think, oh, you know, it's all pretend we don't actually need to know. But then I remember we were being told, right. So this goes there. If you're traveling at this speed for this amount of time going in this direction, then you would be, yeah. And, and and they they would ask us. Yeah, and yeah. Me and Anthony would be like, oh, oh, oh right, yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, in, okay. in band um, of yeah, but in band of brothers and all through this those sequence of series, you, you you really had to do that with every role. Mm. Like you had to really know the stuff, the ins and outs of what your guy did, and that's one of the things that makes it so real, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just did you get a lot of tests back with red ink on it? It's like, it must do better. <laughs> I don't think they would have kicked you off if you gave the wrong answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you um um I forget who we spoke to about this. Who was telling us about it? Whether it was Josh or not. Were you telling us about this fascinating new technique of filming that they had, where they had like what was it like a thousand iPads around you or something? Oh, like the, the volume. Like, yeah. Mm. Well, it was the. Uh, I think was it. Am I right in saying it was developed for Star Wars? So it's Quite the man. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think Josh might have mentioned that. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. This big, basically one hundred and eighty, yeah, huge, ginormous screen, um, which they could, they they had the plane suspended, you know, in front yeah. of it. So it we'd climb in the plane, and the plane would be able to shake and respond and. Yeah crash about in time with what you were seeing projected on the screen that must have been amazing badass that is it was badass. like you're in yeah. some sort of elaborate ride you know but it really made your job easier yeah in a way i mean i didn't get much actual playing time at all so i only got a taster of it um but some of the lads yeah yeah, they, it was because you, you you could see, you could see, you could look up and you can see, you know, the German fighters whoosh, wow. coming towards you. So cool. 
Yeah. When we used to, when we used to, I've, I've, I was like a boy soldier and stuff. I've always enjoyed marching. I don't know why. It's obviously something in my DNA. I've enjoyed marching. So when we used to march places, uh, Freddie Joe used to scream at me for break dancing. He said, "Stop break dancing!" Because I had a particularly jaunty way of marching. I think I enjoyed it too much. Was there an element sometimes we were up in the plane where they, they were just like, "Boys, boys, can you stop enjoying this so much, please?" Because it must have been fantastic being up there, Mesher Smiths flying by, and boys, you're scared, man. It's not a ride. Um, I don't know. Like, like I like say I was never in in the plane in the action, mm. um, so, so I don't know if I do know it was quite horrible in, in the plane. Genuinely, not even yeah. you know, not even obviously in in the story, it's horrible and and awful conditions that they had to endure. But even in the studio, it was pretty grim because you had all, all those layers the gear. On. you had this bunny suit on and then you had the flight jackets and you had the massive thing and it was the height of summer you know for nice. the for the majority of the shoot so some days got up to 30 degrees i think one guy actually passed out and they had to call uh, an ambulance yeah just i think just mentioned to us that someone had to be pulled out yes uh yeah, because it was so it. hot and because yeah. you're on a steven spielberg tom hanks set and because you feel like this is a really big deal a lot of guys were sort of too scared to uh yeah. you'd too say scared not some, to die. Some, yeah <laughs> too scared yeah. of something was wrong because they didn't want i don't think they wanted to be told right well you you know you're off which would uh, you know i don't think would have happened um so 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 yeah one poor guy just sort of sat there and, and got more and more purple <laughs> and uh and uh, he's all right though he's all right i saw him at the Do premiere you think it was a good idea for him to drink 10 pints the night before yeah, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. which is what we all did for like <laughs> nine <laughs> ten months yeah. really is that is that true yeah it was, <laughs> it was yeah it was ter- I mean, george was the funniest one you know he was always george khalil was always the always most yeah open. they would call cut and he would lie on the floor and act and he would jump back up again and that was for like nine months that's what he did i was going to ask about that i was going to ask about who the who the social the social king was amongst the cast who organized all the parties i mean ours still continues to this day we still have a social king who organizes all the parties unfortunately pretty much everybody else is in rehab so it's kind of him drinking by himself now (laughs) yeah (laughs) um we uh all the lads sort of gravitated to the bar of the hotel mm-hmm. i don't yeah. think there was one person that was a sort of you know wrangler yeah. um right okay but, 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 but when we first started of course the, the bar wasn't open yeah uh so everyone was in their rooms ordering food and drink to their rooms and then the bar did open at some point during right. the shoot and from that point on every night people would flock and yeah. sit outside and that was really nice actually because we hadn't had that for like a year and a half and yeah um we're still in the big group chat now that's got yeah, like good. A, a hundred guys in yeah. um, we still just, ju- yeah. just yeah. in october i, I went and met uh, and met loads of them for like a sort of reunion yeah. you were gonna name drop them and you didn't do it i could see the look on your eyes <laughs> you were gonna do a name drop and then you didn't do it i went and met oh i better not say that i'll sound like a dish yeah <laughs> you can keep it to I, yourself it's fine but was it someone no, good was it someone no, really hot no go on no and as and as and since since the show's come out i mean how you know is it you know on your like professionally how well is it has it done for you is it you know I mean, obviously, your family and all your friends must be well chuffed and well proud of you. Probably buying, as Matt would say, buying the the the, the rounds in the pub for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, well, actually, I'd... my family, yes, definitely. Uh, my friends, maybe I should ask them about that. I didn't know that was a thing that was expected of them. One hundred percent of the thing, and don't don't let them invert it and say like you're the Hollywood <laughs> guy now. You buy the booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll chase them up on that. Yeah. Um, no, the response has been really, really lovely. Um, in in terms of career, I, I don't really know. It's early days yet. The industry is in be. a bit of a weird place right now. Um, I was meeting for some really great things at the start of the year, but again, the self tapes have sort of mm-hmm. yeah, well, a bit over the last few weeks. I've noticed that. Yeah. I think the I think the, the 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 thing, and I've I've said this to some of the other guys as well as, as the wise old sage here. 
um, masters of the air will will be a grower. So people have finished it. Yeah. And we do a lot of stuff online. We do battlefield tours and all this kind of stuff. So I'm in with the history nerds. Mm-hmm. And it started out when we started posting about Masters and you guys, the guys coming on, there'd be like, you know, 300 likes of this. And it's, it's starting to get up into the thousands now as mm-hmm. people are starting to get really into it. And it's starting to, people will, will binge it and they'll start watching it over and over and over and over again. And mm-hmm. that particular energy will slowly feed back into the middle class women in London who are actually casting directors who don't really know what they're talking yeah. about. And they'll be like, "Oh, oh, you were in that <laughs> show." They'll they'll finally get it, but it yeah. will take a while. It's but it'll a slow always burn. open it, it'll, it'll always yeah. open doors for you because of what a big show it is. And you'll find, particularly, I think, when you come out here to the states where I am, I think you'll find it will give you some serious gravitas in the next couple of years. People are like, "Oh, you're in Masters. Oh, that's 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 very very cool." You know. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so it's, it, it will take a while, like Doug says. It, it, it's going to take a while, but like it, it's it's a, it's not a temptation, but it's just a natural reaction, I think, from a young actor who's just worked with Hanks and Spielberg and done this amazing show, to suddenly feel really disappointed that the phone isn't ringing mm. every day. But you know, no, you know well, oh, I'm not. Oh, a... oh, that's how I felt. So. <laughs> no, I, I was never. I was under no sort of delusion in that sense i'm not saying you were deluded but i'm totally i knew i knew this show had its sort of core eight guys who sort of mm. carried the whole thing and i i was very lucky to have this small supporting role in it but i, I never expected for a minute that this would be sort of my role that would mm. change the trajectory of my mm. career so i i'm just happy to keep going along and uh, if i can keep getting jobs in in great projects like this and like layla which is a totally opposite uh opposite side of the spectrum um if i can keep working like that i'll be very very happy yeah good man Good Aren't one. young people better than we were Doug? god <laughs> yeah we were dreadful at, at all of that i think you know i think yeah, the days, I don't think we really, we're, we're all a bit more rough around the edges and, and we didn't know about the, you know, that the, there's a there's a sort of a well-beaten, well-trodden kind of traditional path, yeah. a career path. I don't yeah, think any of us really knew that. We didn't know, I didn't know it uh, until much, much later, until it was almost too late. Yeah. But, you know, the, the the lines, you know, you get theatre, you know, then you get something in the West End and then, you know, you get film and then you kind of almost wait to be invited out to America for something specific, you know, something, yeah. specific, whatever, you know, that's the best way to go it, to, to go for it. I think what happened with us lot is we all piled over there <laughs> to America <laughs> and everyone was like, another one, yeah. <laughs> another one. And, yeah. you know, it, it didn't really kind of, you know, it, it didn't, yeah, I don't, I think, I think, this what I've noticed is talking to you guys, this younger generation, you're far more clued up and a lot more mature and uh, yeah, and patient of a long game, a lot more than we were. So you, 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 you yeah, it's very impressive, Louis. Yeah, it is. Also, well, you are a troublemaker. I huh? noticed. Yes, you are a troublemaker. You are uh, you're offsetting the keyboard warriors online, Louis. Um, what? what? Yes, because in the show, uh, Bubbles doesn't return from the attack on Munster. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> not, in fact, his fate. And there are pages on pages of history aficionado yeah. nerds that are going nuts. Yeah, yeah. This. Um, About so his, what, do the have, what do you have timing. to say for yourself? Yeah. What do you have to the say incorrect timing of Bubble's death. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand that, but it's the nature of the beast. When, you're tr- when you've got nine episodes to try and capture what went on and to try and tell a story as powerful and as compelling as this. Sometimes you have to, well, a lot of the time, even sometimes you you have to make compromises narratively speaking. Um, And I, I think that the, the timing of bubbles death is, is, absolutely right for this series Mm. um and i i don't think it's in any way a sort of disrespectful to you know how maybe the people who 
disagree with me and maybe I'm totally no, wrong. I think, I, I think it's what Matt's talking about is a very specific, like say the, the, the nerd, the history nerds are, are very, you know, they're really into facts and timelines, you yes. know, it's yeah, yeah. their, it, you know, it, 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 it's their sort of trophy. It's their, that's the thing that it all hinges on is being able to, you know, drill down on timelines and, and actual facts. But I think, you know, you know, from what I've heard or met people I've met in my experience, they've just been glad that their, you know, relative or that someone from their unit was portrayed at all, you know, mm -hmm. just, and, and you, know, you know what I mean? And he did it obviously very, very well. And I think, you know, in the wider world, people are just happy to be represented, like gr mm. very, very grateful. And I think as Matt yeah. said, you know, when you, yeah, especially when you go to America eventually, and you know, there's some, there's a lot of bases out near LA and in California, isn't there, Matt? And mm -hmm. you start meeting military people. They, you know, especially you know, Air Force people and bomb squad. They, they will, yeah, they will love, love to meet you. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's quite an experience. Yeah, you'll, you'll get a heck of a welcome for those guys. Yeah, you really I'll will. Pick, really I'll pick will. you up on one thing when you were talking about that, and you uh, you just said in this series, are you angling for a spin-off? <laughs> of your own the bubble story <laughs> the bubbles story? prequel, <laughs> the bubbles <Yeah>. prequel. <laughs> um no i didn't realize i said in 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 this series um i mean in the in the show or yeah, yeah. you know it's a yeah, just teasing you there louis <laughs> yeah <laughs> as much as i would love to do a, a bubbles prequel obviously oh, so you're not counting it out then okay not good. counting it out yeah, okay <laughs> we have we have spoken, didn't we speak about this in a few podcasts like, what what other story could they do i don't know i did get sent this article that was quite funny that was one of those websites that's probably written by a bot um that was you know weighing up how likely most of the air is to return for a second season Right, mm. <laughs> you know, and it and it says, well, you know, it it came to the conclusion that there's a seventy percent chance that Master of the Air will get renewed for season two, and I thought, what? <laughs> Who's putting this out? Does somebody not know what it's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, how much interaction did you have with Dale, and do you have a good Dale die story for us? Oh. I was made to drop and do press ups on day one, on the first yeah. morning. Yeah. On the f I was the first person. What was your infraction? What did you do wrong, Louis? <laughs> well, we'd had, uh, I, I basically left my hat unattended. Oh. Just after we'd had the talk about the importance of the uniform. <laughs> 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 so basically it was the first morning of the first day and we'd had this uh we'd done some exercises and we'd had this big lecture and it's about the importance of the uniform then we went out for a toilet break and i left my hat under my chair uh and i came back in and oh god i, I remember him <laughs> saying you know is that yours <laughs> and uh I, I was like yes and he went do you know what a press up is oh no he said a push up or something um and he was yeah drop and keep doing it until i say stop i think he he was actually lovely i really liked him and i think he just wanted to make an example out of anyone on that first morning on the first day he would have chosen any just just to you know go we're not messing around here um but he's he's a, he was really lovely actually he's a bit of a lovey yeah, he pretends not to be. He pretends that he's a lovely. I think it's probably years in the industry. Yeah, <laughs> he is definitely a bit of a lovely. He did. I might so, have a few lines for him in the show. He, ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, I, I, he, he's a lovely, but he's he's, you know, he really gets the job done. And he, he, yeah. I remember we were learning how to shoot the. Um, the gun from the plane i can't remember what it's called now it's three years ago we wrote pages and pages and pages of notes anyway we were shooting this um this 50 cal the gun yeah and uh mine jammed <laughs> and i remember sitting there and i sort of turned around to say what do i do and he he was standing right over me and he went would you do that would you do that in a plane huh? would you stand and go Ooh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yes, I would. I'm like, you would. If I don't know what to do, I would. <laughs> I think the point is that he told us all what we should do in the case of a jam, and I just 
froze up. Oh. <laughs> um, no, so that was that was scary. Oh, we actually got to keep uh, one of the shells uh, from that day, which is a weird thing, you know, from yeah. the from the the casing. Um, so we've got that somewhere that I keep forever. It's a nice little memento. Yeah. What did you steal? What did you? Everyone like? I mean, obviously you got your dog tags that we're. we're well, no, about. I didn't. I didn't oh. because because my last day got dropped. So I finished before I actually know, knew I'd finished. Oh. Um, so I had my last day, but I didn't know it was my last day because I, I was expecting to come back in for one day of pickup shots, <laughs> which then they said, they sent an email to say, um, we just, Louis done. We don't need him again. Thank you very much. So I didn't even get to say bye to, you know, all the cast and crew that I'd, made friends with so I, and i didn't get to raid the costume department <laughs> yeah i think a uh, shout out to oh. anyone who works in the costume department to give uh, louis his uh, dog tags <laughs> they must be somewhere they must be somewhere you know the joe Payne dog tags i would have loved them but yeah i um i once did this flick and it was out in romania and i i knew it was my last day's film it was actually a night shoot and I thought, right, well, because I'll, I'll say thank you to the crew, you know, for, for doing a great job. And I had a really good time. And I bought these, like, like you know, those, like, Heineken kegs. You can get, like, a keg of Heineken. Yeah. I bought a couple of these and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I put it on the table at the back of the studio. Like, and I was going to do this big, like, thank you, everybody. I bought you this. And I... I t- I think it got called cut and that was me done. And I turned around and say, thank you, everybody. I got you this. And someone had nicked them. <laughs> <laughs> and there was nothing there. <laughs> and I think I might have mentioned that I was going to get people's stuff. So they were looking like, that. Oh, All where's the my stuff? Moving on to the next shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I always saw was the it's... back of their heads. And their exactly. Bye and... then, yeah. bye. Yeah. And nobody liked you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was a one day shoot, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Extra. Were you in this? I want to say, Dave, what's your name? I don't know. Um, so, uh, so, a piece of advice as well. So, when you do go to Los Angeles, let Tom Hanks know you're there. Um, right. Because um, Damien Lewis, did you know this story, Doug? Damien Lewis had a birthday party in, in a bar in LA and he invited a bunch of the cast there who were, who were around. Um, and he invited Tom as well. And about one o'clock in the morning, the phone went behind the bar and Tom Hanks just said, oh, listen, I can't make it, but I'll pick it up and put it all on his credit card. Wow. So, you know, advice to you guys. Yeah. Tell Tommy there, make up a birthday. It doesn't matter whose it is. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> invite Tom. Get the most expensive champagne you can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Tom will Go pick to it up. the Chateau Mormont or the yes. Mondrian <laughs> on Sunset. Book <laughs> yourself in for a week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, we've had you for almost an hour. Um, I mean, thanks so much for coming on and chatting to us. It's great. We subhead our podcast, The Nearly Men, um, and I ask everybody, all my prey, this question. Uh, is there something you could have been? like a nearly story and that could be a part that you nearly got where you nearly played batman or it could oh. be the fact that you nearly ended up as a lawyer in new york or parachuting into somewhere i don't know uh, in terms of roles really. that i've nearly got yes gives one of those you know, if anyone believed me I, I nearly got everything on television you know <laughs> that's how i sort of <laughs> Something new comes out and I say, oh, yeah, I just was, like, I was meant to be that character, but uh, for some reason it didn't go my way. Um, no, I nearly, uh, I actually didn't go to university. I was all ready to go to university to do English literature um, because I, qu- I quite liked the idea of being a writer. But then I, I got a job uh, that made me defer my place because I thought I love this uh, acting. I want to pursue it, defer my place. And then it came around again. So I was about to go to university and then I got another job that I went, ah, I, I'm, I've just got to do this job because it's four months in South Africa for a BBC show. So I'm, I'm going to do that and then I'll go to university. And that sort of happened. And by that point, the university said, no, yeah. you can't defer again. With uh, So so I nearly could have gone that way. And then if I'd gone to university, who, who I, I don't know where I would be. I don't know if I would have pursued... Yeah. This uh, to the extent I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, it does. That's a good one. 
Yeah, I think yeah, the, your your uh, the universe definitely want you on screen rather than writing the the words. I think Louis. So yeah, okay, it's a good one. It's a good one. You're doing well, very well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect place to round off. Well, Louis, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank for, you for having uh, me. Yeah, thank you so much for your name being exactly phonetically as I sort of worried about, but yeah, I got nailed it, right. it. Nailed it. Yes. What a day. <laughs> Can't bend my finger to say yes, but there you go. Can't make a fist. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Um, we're going to reach out to you in the future because, you know, we've started to do Masters of the Air tours. So we might knock on your door and say, if you want to come on a tour, we, we go to like Thorpe's Abbots and all these places. If you want to come on as a guest, earn a bit of scratch, we do pay and we can take you around the place. Um, it'd oh. be great having you there. We'll get you to talk yeah. on microphone a little bit. Guests yeah. will love it. Yeah, That um, sounds really well, fun. We'll reach yeah. out to you in the future. Great. Yeah, please do. Oh, great. Wonderful well, thank to you, meet you, Louis. We'll yeah, really, you well. really nice. Thank you so Take much. Care, wish you well. Yeah. You too. Thank you very much, guys. All Cheers, brother. Thank All you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Another very erudite young man. Yeah, they're all they're very sort of together and educated. Mm. Interesting, aren't they? They're yeah, a wonderful yeah. bunch. So yeah, different yeah. to us. <laughs> hey, we were, Such better people. Yeah, they just were. We were just ripping up the town, being absolute. Yeah. That's just we were just a nightmare, weren't we? No wonder our careers didn't go anywhere. But um, no, it's lovely, isn't it? It's just great hearing their experiences. And yeah, does it? I mean, it does. Does it, it send you back to you know when we were at the staging area and going to boot camp and? You know, meeting the people and being on set. I mean, their experience is quite different. A little bit. They're in a plane. They're in a plane. Yeah. A certain amount. Was it how many crew was on a plane? Up, um, was it five eight? or six? I think five or six. And so you're only going to be in a pocket of five or six. Well, of course, yeah. we were in platoons, and sometimes you know be, there'd be hundreds of people there. So it's I, quite think it's, I think it's. Been, I think it's to do with casting. I think they were cast so well. We were cast so well. And they were cast so well. They've got a certain type of person to be in it. Who were perhaps more cerebral, more able to do all. Yeah, this you would have had to have been. Yeah. yeah, you would have had to be, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd have had to. Yeah. I mean, to get to be get to become anything to do with piloting a plane or uh, uh, in in the air force. Now you have to have a degree, don't you? Yeah, before yeah, you exactly. get accepted on the program, it's very rare that you know someone will come from the ground up to, to sort of you know do that. I don't think even think it's allowed. So. I think by nature they are, and it's really reflected in the the guests we've had on. They're yeah, really very is. clever, wonderful young men. Yeah, really. Yeah, impressive. yeah. And I think possibly with us it was like, yeah, these renegades would probably jump out of a plane. So yeah, it's exactly. Kind of, it was like street urchins, reckless, yeah, was... recklessly throw themselves out of something. Yeah, yeah, which is exactly right. Which is what. Yeah, we were. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah really it is. Anyway. Yeah, let's round out. Um, as a side note, Dougie, you're looking extremely well. Keep going. You look great. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Um, keep cracking on. I'm proud of you. All right, brother. I shall see you. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow. We're doing back to back, aren't we? We are. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Brilliant. All, All right, right, brother. Cheers, Thanks for listening, everyone. Cheers, Cheers fellas. Bye. Bye.